So you've reminded me of another story that gets into both human factors and this inability of the people who are low down on the totem pole to be able to challenge and, and, and say what they see. There was a, a really famous case study that we studied when I was at the US Army's Red Teaming School at Fort Leavenworth about the Einstein Medical Center in mm -hmm. New York. They had a problem just a few years be before, I don't know exactly when, but, but within the past you know, 10 or 15 years, they had a problem with a MRSA outbreak. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, medical, medication-resistant staphylococcus uh, something. Look in the show notes and we'll tell you what it stands for. <laughs> but it's the infection that you get in, mm -hmm. tend to get in hospitals, and it can be fatal. And, and it, it's something that exists in every hospital, and you, know, you can't eradicate it, but it was really out of control at this hospital. And they had brought the doctors together and said, what can we do to make sure that, that we get this, this infect, these infections under control? And the doctors had suggested several things, and they'd done them, and it wasn't, it wasn't working. So then they had paid expensive outside consultants to come in and yeah. tell them what to do. Yeah. And they told them pretty much the exact same thing the doctor said. And, you know, they said, well, we did that and that didn't work. So they brought in a, a group of, of folks who said, look, we're going to look at this in a different way. We're not going to tell you what to do. We're not going to ask the experts. We're going to have conversations, focused conversations with every different cohort that exists mm -hmm. in this hospital. We're going to talk to the doctors. We're going to talk to the nurses. We're going to talk to the administrators. We're also going to talk to the medical assistants, the, the nurses, aides, the janitors, everybody who's involved. And the administration was like, well, you know, we've tried everything else, so sure, why not? They didn't have a lot of confidence in this. But that's exactly what they did. And one of the, the key things that came out of that was they, when they got down to the janitor, and the janitors were kind of like, why are we even here? You know, we don't, you know, why are you asking us about this? You should be asking the doctors, surely. Um, and they said, well, you know, it's okay. We're just, we're talking to everybody. And we just want to know what you've seen that's different because not every ward at the hospital had the same rate of infections. Mm -hmm. There was a couple of wards where the infection rate was significantly lower, but they couldn't figure out why. So in... They worked their way down to the group with, with the janitors. And in that group, they, they explained that. One of the janitors kind of sheepishly raised his hand, and he said, well, well, you said, you know, ward number two is one of the wards that, that has a low rate of infection? And they said, yeah, do you notice anything different when you're in ward number two? He said, yeah, I, I clean ward number two, and I clean ward number one and number three as well. And there's always a, a lot more trash in ward number two. So they were, they were really puzzled because they were like, well, how does more trash lead to less MRSA? So they asked him, well, have you, what's in the trash? He said, well, there's a lot of gloves in the trash. Now they were, they said, wait, gloves, everybody's supposed to be wearing gloves all the time. So they, they went and got the, the rest of the staff from ward number two. And what it turned out was that the hospital was only ordering medium-sized gloves. Most of the nurses had petite hands and the medium-sized gloves were too big. And so when they were trying to do injections and stuff, it was, it was, they were the taking way. their yeah. gloves off and doing that. In ward number two, the head nurse, out of her own initiative and her own pocket, had been every couple of weeks stopping at a medical supply store and buying a case of small gloves and putting them in the, taking out the medium gloves from the dispensers and putting Our small gloves in. Brilliant. Yeah. And didn't even they hadn't even connected the dots. Yeah. They realized that's what it was in that ward. They were using the gloves. Yeah. And because nobody wants to get called out, when they'd asked, Are you, "Is everyone following procedures?" Of course, everyone yeah. in the other ward said, "Oh, yeah, we Cover. wear our gloves all the time." But now yeah. it was out. And the thing is, it was it was that janitor. Yeah. That saw that. But you have to create mechanisms. You have to create. Forms, you have to allow yeah. people yeah. to have the, the psychological safety, but also the opportunity to speak up, to share what they see, and then have that be heard and not discounted if you want to be able to benefit from that. And that's what H4 did. Yeah. Because everyone's talking about psychological safety now, and that is a damned hard thing to create off the bat, especially in organizations yeah. today. But going through these mechanisms, having tools, techniques, and capabilities that allow people in anonymity. Yeah. Until it becomes a normal cultural, and then you can approve it. Then you can <coughs> do it openly. But yeah. 
so often they don't. They try and create psychological safety first. Yes. And that's almost, you're missing the boat if you're trying to do that because there's a much easier way of raising oh, totally. all these points. And, and, and that leads us, you know, that organizational learning and, and how do you move that on, which shows that healthcare didn't learn because Semmelweis and his whole bit about um, uh, doctors, uh, pregnant women and their deaths. Yes. Um, yeah. and, and the infection rates. And it was just like, Doctors, midwives, midwives are washing their hands and telling the doctors, no, you've got to wash, wash your instruments, wash your hands. Ah, it's not my problem. And, and yet, you know, so it's this piece of where is it that we can learn? And you have to tell those stories. Yeah. And, and the, 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 the best stories are those with a really rich context, not just the one line, two liners. And, and I, you mentioned if only. It's something that I do as an exercise. I, I produced a documentary about a diving fatality, and the title of it is If Only, hmm. because there are a number of people on board the boat who, in hindsight, said, I wish I'd said something. If only I'd said something. And I, I run a little exercise, and I, I tell her what would be a social media account, and it might be three or four lines of text. Um, a diver is on a training course. He gets off the back of the boat. The instructor's still on the boat. He swims around the side. And he appears to lose consciousness and sinks down to 40 meters. And it's like, what do you think happened? And people come up with all sorts of real ide you know, ideas. But there's only a few of them say, I don't have enough knowledge. Mm -hmm. And then I play oh. them bits of the video. So the first 24 minutes is face to camera work with the widow and the dive team to talk about their story. Uh, and then I say, so what do you think now? Ooh, ooh, OK. And then I play a little bit. I've got some analysis at the end, sort of eight and nine minutes at the end of that, that basically says, and this is the human factors as aspect behind it, the theory, why do people behave the way they do? This explains what was going on over there, and this is how you can detect it before it happens. Now what do you think? And you end up with a much richer answer. And the whole thing, you know, so you're, the red team thinking stuff is, let's look at the context. Let's look at the depth of what's going on, Correct. not just the surface immediate stupid. Thank you for tuning in to Red Team TV, sponsored by Red Team Thinking. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and notification icon below so you don't miss the next idea-filled episode. If you prefer to listen on the go, subscribe to Bryce and Marcus's podcast, The Thinking Leader, on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you like to listen. And don't forget to visit redteamthinking.com to learn more about Red Team Thinking work and Marcus and Bryce's upcoming online courses. While you're there, take our free quiz to find out how you rate as a red team thinker and if your organisation has a red team culture. Because who thinks wins?